Okay, in this part of fluid mechanics, we're gonna move deeper into our analysis and we're gonna talk about Reynolds transport theorem right here. Now, it's a bit gonna get a bit complicated, more conceptual than more medical, but I believe let's just try to cover both areas. In fluid mechanics, when we analyze a liquid or fluid, there are normally two ways that we can look at it. One way is that we analyze the particles in the fluid. What do I mean by that? For example, the, the fluid layers over here, so I will just write something like this. The, the whole fluid layers over here, and at, at a certain point, we would just pick a certain box here, and we are going to concern, our analysis will be concerning all the particles in this box. So, the, the particles will be like that, and then after a certain time, the particles will obviously move somewhere else, right? Well, yes, they're going to move somewhere else like that. But our analysis still continues on the particles regardless where they move. So at a certain time, when the particles are in this box, we will analyze them like that, and a certain time after that, we will analyze where the particles will go to. Our analysis is called a system analysis. A system analysis because we are analyzing a system of particles, or we, we make the particles like a system. So no matter where it goes, those particles that spread around are still constitute the system. That's a system analysis. On top of that, there's another way that we can look at it, and that is what we, we call a control volume analysis. What is a control volume analysis? Control volume analysis means that in our fluid, we will pick a certain volume, a certain volume in that fluid. I drew the box here because I would also like to say that the other way that we look at it is that this box that I drew becomes our control volume. So what do I mean by this? I mean that after a certain time, as the fluid spreads out or as the fluid goes in this direction or goes in whatever direction, our analysis is restricted to this volume, okay? I hope you see that difference. System analysis is that we will pick a system of particles, our analysis continues with those system of particles, so later we will analyze the particles over here because they form the system, the original system. Control volume analysis is that we pick a certain volume and our analysis is limited to that volume. So um, a common example is if you take the jet engine, right? As the, as the wind goes inside here, if, if we are doing a system analysis, we are analyzing the bunch of wind particles over here, and after that, after a certain time, the wind particles will go over here, our analysis moves from here to here. We are still analyzing the system. We start off with the system over here, and the system now becomes over there. If it's a control volume analysis, we will pick, well, normally, we will pick the jet engine, the space inside the jet engine here, and our analysis goes on in what, what's going on inside here, the control volume. Now, it's very good or really to progress further in the study of certain fluids, we need a certain way to move from the control volume to the system volume. Also, the control volume representation of the, of the analysis to the system analysis. And this moving from control volume to system analysis or from vice versa is what we use, what we use, what we would like to use called Reynolds transport theorem. Reynolds transport theorem is to move from control volume to system analysis or control volume analysis to system analysis and vice versa. All laws of physics are governed by a certain parameter. What do I mean by that? Um, velocity, okay, velocity or a, a law of physics, let's just say motion of a body, we use velocity to govern that. The matter, the amount of space of, of a certain law of physics, we use volume, uh, density and mass to govern that. So, we start in discussing about this theorem by how to say, making a generalized form of the physics laws and the physics parameters. That generalized form is given by B equals to small b, small m, small b. B is what we call the extensive property. And this big B over here, the small b is what we call the intensive property. And as you can see, this intensive property is given by the, the property per mass, m is mass over here. So, a, more, a good example, or uh, one way that we can show it is I just simply show you an example. For example, everybody knows kinetic energy is half mv squared. So if I were to represent this physics law in this certain generalized form, this extensive property would be the kinetic energy, the small b would be equals to half v squared. Does that make sense? Because we've got a mass over here. So the intensive property is half v squared, Multiplied by the mass will give me the extensive property, but in this case, it's kinetic energy. So, we, when we proceed with the theorem, we want to find a, we want to make a generalized form for all these physics laws because there are a lot of physics laws inside fluid mechanics. So, this is the generalized form that we have. So, what is the next step? Well, the next step is that using what we have, 
we want to find the extensive property of a system of particles. So, like I said, I, I draw again the fluid. So the fluid's over here. And then we pick this system, as in this, this group of particles to be our system of analysis, our, our space of, of analyzing. And we want to find uh, the extensive property of this whole thing over here. Well, we just introduced some calculus, which shouldn't be a problem. We just label a point over here. So a small b, a small portion of the extensive property is given by mass and a small portion of the, sorry, it's given by mass and bi. So let's just take this particle as mi over here. Okay, but we can switch mi, mi to the density at that point multiplied by the volume at that point, where I will use a, a dash over there not to be confused with velocity. Velocity is just a v. Okay, so a small volume of the extensive property, whatever the extensive property may be, is given by a small mass, which is mi, multiplied by the intensive property at that point, which we would write as a small density multiplied by the volume, multiplied by bi, the intensive property. Okay, and I believe the volume, we should write it as small change in v. Small change in v dash. Okay, so this is what we have. Now, we started off with the system analysis, so we want to find the extensive property of the whole system of particles. That would simply be B equals to limit uh, basic Riemann sums. The small change in V tends towards zero. So I'm basically just letting that small V, the small volume, which has a given density at that point, tend towards zero. But in doing so, I will sum up all the small little points, basic calculus. Sum up all the small little points, so I will get the density, yeah, at that point i, multiplied by vi, and the, sorry, yeah, uh, small change in v. This is what I have, and then I will just make a continuation, as in, uh, introduce the integral calculus, and it will simply be this one. Uh, I'll write system over here, which I should write system over here, and it's density, b, change in v, okay? So if I could get the proper equations representing density, and representing the intensive property, because remember, intensive property could be things like velocity or velocity or like acceleration. It's all the it's all the physical physical parameters. B can be uh, velocity acceleration, and all these could be dependent on where I'm looking at the system of particles, system analysis. So basically, I write in general form the density multiplied by the intensive property and integrate that the whole system with respect to the volume because I'm summing them all up. Density I can assume not to be constant because it is still inside the integral sign, so I still leave it inside there. So this is what we call the extensive property of the whole system of particles. Likewise, if I can also write BCB, which is the extensive property of the control volume. So. For sake of argument, right now, the system of particles coincides with the control volume. So, they're still the same. But it, that will not be the case after a certain time. So, I can still write the analogous form using the same derivation as integrate CV. So, I will integrate the density multiplied by the intensive property, integrate that with respect to the volume of the control volume. Okay? This will be um, integrating with respect of the volume of the system, but this is the control volume. So, these are the two equations that we have. Now, Normal physics, we are normally is normally more important concerning the rate of change of something. Well, that, that is the case that we do over here because in fluid mechanics, after a certain time, things change a lot. So we want to really be concerned with the rate rate of change of things. Instead of we want to shift our focus to d b s. Okay, so the rate of change of the extensive property in the system of particles with respect to time is equals to d dt and integrate the system of particles, density, intensive property, dv. This is the equation that we are usually concerned with and the other one is obviously the, the analogous for the control volume. So integrate that the intensive property in the control volume dt equals to dt integrate, sorry, differentiate and integrate cv, the density, the intensive property and the volume. So these are the two equations that we start out with and what is our goal? Our goal for this upcoming lesson is to really connect or find a way to connect this one with this one over here and possibly vice versa. Bearing in mind that we are dealing with the rate of change of the extensive property. I want to make one small clarification um, to really clarify all the doubts over there. This statement means that we are looking at the rate of change of the extensive property in the control volume, right? So, we, when we limit our analysis to the control volume over here, we are looking at the rate of change of the extensive property 
no matter what it may be, acceleration, velocity, mass, volume, like what I said, we are limiting or we want to look at the rate of change of that extensive property in the control volume. So if the if the fluid were to move out like so, right, our control volume is still the same. It's still this cube over here. We are looking at the extensive property or the rate of change of the extensive property in the control volume. Very uh, simple example, if we are looking at, let's just say, a volume of a gas, right? So let's just say our extensive property is right now, currently is volume. We are looking at the extensive property of a volume of a gas. If I were to uncap the top over here and gas starts going out, just like a certain balloon, if, if you could think about it, gas starts going out. This would be less than zero. I hope you can see that. Because our control volume is this cube, but as gas starts going out, the extensive property inside the control, control volume decreases. That's why it's less than zero.